Oil, possibly the most important commodity today. In some way, shape, or form, oil is being consumed all around us. Gasoline to ship your goods to the stores, petroleum-based products in our house, and thousands of other ways that we don't see in the supply chain. With this commodity in such high demand and need at this time in this present day, a crash in the global pricing seems rather illogical. Despite massive long-term need for oil, we now have oil hitting a 12-year low. With predictions, it could hit $20 a barrel. There is only one reason why it was able to hit such a low level, and that reason will bring much turmoil to this world. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to discuss oil specifically and get into some other topics. I would like to preface this by saying I do believe that there are alternative energy sources out there. Some of them are very good, some not so good, but oil remains the number one at this time. That's what's important to note. That's all I wanted to really highlight, that yes, there are other things out there, but oil obviously at this time, most important, and they're keeping it that way. They suggest that there's too much oil right now. There's a glut, and that's why the prices have gone down. If you really believe this, you need to look historically how this all took place, let's say, you know, before a few decades ago, because they've been playing around with the markets, and it's really caused havoc. If you think about it, if the price was, let's say, over $100 a barrel a few years ago, and they said there's too much oil, does it go down to $20, $30 a barrel because there's too much? Absolutely not. You have companies and corporations which would be willing to buy it and keep it and hold it for the price to rise more into the future. But that's not really happening as far as I'm aware. Something's very different this time around. A brutal New Year's sell-off in oil markets quickened on Monday with prices plunging 6% to a 12-year low as further eruptions in the Chinese stock market threatened to knock crude as low as $20 a barrel. Of course, that hasn't happened yet, but many analysts are suggesting it could go that low. Amid an accelerating tailspin that shows no sign of slowing, Monday's dive, the biggest one-day loss since September triggered a rash of panicky trading across the markets. And that's what this is all about. It's about traders making money off of commodities, off of any of these futures markets. And it goes into you know other things here, but basically we're falling back... Of, to a 12-year low, and that is far beyond what we experienced during the recession. I'm going to move on to this here. It does talk about China and other things, but I'd like to move into this out of The Guardian. Repeating the pattern of last summer, sharp drops in the world's biggest stock exchanges mirrored plunging shares in China were fresh signs of economic weakness and the prospect of a ban on share sales by major stakeholders being lifted has sparked a wave of selling by smaller investors. China is in big trouble right now. This is one of the reasons that they're suggesting that oil has come down. I believe it could factor into the price, but does it go from 100 to 30? No, it doesn't work like that. Moves in China's yuan currency, which authorities allowed to weaken in an apparent attempt to bolster flagging exports, heightened alarm about the state of the world's second uh, biggest economy. They can make any excuse in the book. If they knew this was going to happen and that it would cause a sell-off, they wouldn't have done it unless they were on the inside, unless they knew exactly this is going, what was going to happen and they're able to somehow profit off of it. They don't do things without knowing how they're going to react. They have the the things in place already to stop the stock market to basically cut it off. And in fact, they have done that. And Beijing mustered what an uh, analyst called its national team to intervene and boost the yuan on Friday, offering some brief respite to the markets in China and beyond. I'm going to move
move on to this. The big thing is that we have seen the Chinese government rallying the national team forces in both the currency market and the equities market. Right away, this is considered to be positive. If you print money, that's positive. Although it should be negative, it's actually positive. And the weird thing is, in the US, the US dollar will go up if they print money. It's completely upside down from just a few years ago, the way things would go, would have gone. Traders reported China's state-owned banks intervening to prop up the yuan. They'll do anything. They'll do exactly what Japan has done for decades now, and that is buy every single share of the stock market if necessary. And that's their own words. Right here, half of the U.S. shale oil producers could go bankrupt before the uh, crude markets reach equilibrium. You have to remember that, in general, this fracking and shale and everything is a very expensive method for the most part. So if oil isn't at what they believe, let's say, $70 a barrel, you're going to run into some problems Think about all of the businesses that are involved in this, not just digging it out of the ground, but the shipping of it and everything else in line. It's very important. New normal oil price could be 50 to 100% above current levels. He ultimately sees crude oil prices stabilizing near $60, but it could be more than two years before that happens. This is just one analyst's thoughts on it i don't really necessarily agree with any of this i believe that they those in control will decide what the price is at any given time i'm gonna have to hold off on my opinion just until the just one second as we get into what i wrote about in my book the tar sands in canada are the perfect example of oil in shortage i believe there's more of a shortage than there is actually a supply glut now realistically they're able to dig it out of the ground they're able to do this for quite some time but why in the world would you ever want to dig oil from the tar sands in canada if it was so easy to gain access in other places in the world think about where they're drilling in the gulf of mexico in these deep 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 wells and we saw what's happened historically before and it can be a very big mess for the ecosystem and everything so why are you gonna go through all this dirt just to get a little bit of oil well i believe that they have to some degree run out of the easy ones or perhaps where they need to get to it. If Saudi Arabia, for example, has control of it, well, they need to get it through other means. And they're willing to pay a very high price for it. But what happens when you don't have any buyers at that high price, which is happening now? Well, you have a big problem. And you have, for example, in this case here, the Canadian dollar not doing well as a result. And many exporting nations where they have this oil as their major commodity, they're suffering. Their currency is suffering, and basically their exports are suffering as a result. Dr. Mark Faber suggested that oil must be at $70 per barrel in order to break even. We're nowhere near that right now. You're going to have these, you know, all the refineries and everything interconnected with oil suffering at this time, perhaps job losses, businesses will be shutting down stocks will take a hit as a result everything's interconnected you need to follow along with that but on the other end of the spectrum you have what george soros said what's going on in china amounts to a crisis when i look at the financial markets there is a serious challenge which reminds me of the crisis we had in 2008 George Soros, you're a little late because I've been talking about this for quite some time. Some are not willing to admit it until now. We see the 
analysts and everybody involved here, the billionaires and everyone else lining up to say things aren't looking pretty right now. The global economy may begin to show signs of circling in the same 2008 drain and much as they did in the years leading up to the financial crash, people are still recklessly spending themselves into oblivion while the drain could be slowly sucking them in. Here's a few things that people are doing. People are buying purses here for $100,000 and Manhattan apartments surging to a new record. And it just goes on to say how people are spending all of their money. We're talking about the billionaires here and they're doing so at an alarming rate. Things are very different. Then you have this here. Two Texas billionaires bought up 38,000 acres of Idaho land. The brothers have also reportedly purchased nearly 300,000 acres in Montana in recent years. So we have this situation, as I said, billionaires are able to buy up real assets and now is the time they're doing that. They're buying collectible items, they're buying things like precious metals, they're buying land and farmland and everything else because they know what's going to happen. They know that the devaluation of their currency is going to take place. So some decide to buy things they really don't need and others are getting smart and buying real assets. That is what's important. Now, if you're thinking, I'm not a billionaire, I can't afford 300,000 acres. Think smaller. If you have some money hanging around and you want to invest in real estate, you're thinking, I live in Toronto. I can't buy a million dollar house. What's this money GPS talking about? It's crazy. Well, perhaps you want to buy something smaller. What about a storage locker? What about a parking space? These are things that people don't think about. It's real estate, but it's not a house. You can get into the market. You can get a nice parking spot in a nice building that's significantly cheaper, has less maintenance, less headache and everything. And you will be, in effect, in the real estate market. You have to think outside the box, as they say. Just understand that there is more to this than what you hear a lot of individuals talk about out there. Now, for my opinion on this, why is this happening? Why is oil at this price right now? What's going on? What is it? I believe that, and I've said this before publicly, that you want to drop the price of oil. It's priced in US dollars, and you want to use that as a financial weapon of mass destruction. You have countries like Russia, like Iran, and like others interconnected with them, like China, for example, who depend on the price of oil, particularly Russia right now, as we're looking at that. You can hurt them very bad using weapons. But sometimes those weapons exist beyond what we can see. You can manipulate it. You can use the financial media, the mainstream media, the mockingbird media, the propaganda, whatever you want to call it. Use it to your advantage. Crash the markets. Hurt them. Get them into debt. Get them weak. And they will be more likely to do business, to do deals when they need to, let's say, invade another country, that is NATO, the US, whoever, Perhaps they'll be a little bit indebted and they really don't want to get their hands dirty this time on the other end, whether that's Russia or China or what have you. This is the name of the game. Use this as a weapon. It's very intelligent, very destructive because we could see turmoil. We could see this escalate into a hot war even over this could expand from the proxy wars that are happening right now today into something much, much worse. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. Those help me out very much. Wanted to say thank you to all of you who were commenting on a previous video that I did where I was on camera. Definitely uh, saw all your comments on there. I do appreciate that. And all your comments on all of my videos, of course. Last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know you'll find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. 
You can actually flip through the book. If you go over to Amazon, they have this look inside feature that allows you to flip through the pages of the book and see if you like it. Take care.